Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to Wired Live. Today, we're taking a brief break from our scheduled stream content to have the wonderful folks from Safe in Our World join us and tell us about their Safer Together initiative, something that they are going to be pushing over the entirety of May with a heavy focus on some incredible fundraising activity over the next week or so. And rather than us tell you, hey, this is awesome, you should go do it, which is what I'm doing right now, hey, this is going to be awesome, you should all go and get involved, uh, we also thought that we should get these fine folks on to come and tell us a little bit about the charity, about the fundraiser, and why it's why it's relevant, why, why you should be getting involved in it as much as possible. Um, so, without further ado, let's get some uh, introductions on the plate. Uh, folks, who are you? What are you doing here? Hi. Um... Uh, so I'm Rosie. I'm one of the charity officers at Safe in Our World, and um, I joined the charity back in September of last year with Sarah, probably about a week apart. And uh, it's kind of a running joke now that we can't really say that we've, we're new to the charity anymore. Um, a huge gamer, huge advocate for mental health, and really happy to be here. Fantastic. All right, next. This beautiful bearded man in the middle. <laughs> Oh, it needs a trim, doesn't it? It does. I, um, I feel like our lockdown beards, like, like we're able to get away with this as a matter of laziness, you know what I mean? Like, ah, it's lockdown, it doesn't matter, we're not really seeing anyone, but I think that is vast running out. I think we we, we need a beard date, is what we need. Look, yeah, looking at the camera, I think I'm off to the hairdressers after this. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm Jake, I'm charity assistant at Safe Now World. Um, I volunteered from the start, and uh, was given a job well my dream job really um back in november um i'm a an avid gamer um i live sleep eat and sleep games um i rescue animals as well uh started off in the animal industry and and kind of went elsewhere and yeah happy to be here thank you for having me not a problem. We're going to have to give us a rundown on those animals. I kind of get a Dr. Doolittle vibe behind oh. you with all of these cages. Oh, I feel yeah. I feel like you're probably sat with fish yeah. tanks under your desk and, and all sorts. I need to... Yeah. Well, well, we need Two a list of those. Fields, a tiger in the corner. Um. <laughs> but uh, don't tell me that. I'm very naive. We, we, we've established this here already. I will believe 90% of what you tell me, and I will ask to see your tiger if, if you tell me that there is one. No tiger. No tiger. <laughs> Okay, and last but um, lastly, not least. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I'm one of the charity officers, uh, along with Rosie. Uh, my claim to fame is I was the first member of staff for Safe in Our World back in September. Um, mm. I'm not from a gaming background, so gaming is new to me, um, and I'm, I'm learning that as we go along. Uh, but I am... Uh, been working for charities for over 20 years uh, actually come from sport of golf most recently so this is very different um but i'm very excited to be here at safe in the world always been a massive advocate of mental health um and now a mental health first aider um so uh yeah that's that's about me i'm a crazy cat lady on the side but um yeah very happy to be here and chatting about the great cause at safe today fantastic so these are the fine folks that are going to be with us today while we have a very brief run through thank you all very much for joining us so i, I guess what we should uh, immediately touch on um you know all, all three of you kind of gave uh, an, an explanation as to the the position that you hold in safe in our world and the kind of focus of mental health uh, that it perceives so those of you perceptive People in the chat may have um, guessed that, yes, it, it is very much a mental health charity. But um, I, I guess we start from the top. What exactly is Safe in Our World? And, and what, you know, what does it do? What, what's, what are the goals? What's the mission? You know, how, how do when someone gets into an elevator with you and they go, what, what do you do? And they go, oh, we're for Safe in the World. And they go, what's that? You, you know, what's the, what's the elevator pitch? Take this one if you want. <laughs> um... So I think in a nutshell, Safe in Our World is, is the mental health charity for gamers and for those who work within the video games industry. Um, and it's very much a two-pronged approach in being able to support everyone within it and not just, just target the consumers, not just target the employees, but everyone. Um, and as part of the mission, uh, the main thing that we're looking to do is be able to decrease the stigma around the discussion within mental health and make it become a normal part of conversation 
um, and we're doing that through a variety of different ways. We have our website, we've got a lot of information uh, available on there. We highlight um, video games that discuss mental health or portray it um, mm. accurately. We have uh, stories from people within the industry who have experienced mental health um, issues before. And yeah, there's a variety of different initiatives that we're working on at the moment to be able to, to move forward with the mission and beat the stigma, really. And that's that, that's an well, I mean, first of all, it's an incredibly noble um, task altogether. But it's not an easy one either, really, is it? I mean, it, it's kind of for, for better or for worse. I mean, you know, we're we're all gamers, whether it's you know long time gaming fans in the case of Jake or or like Sarah here is kind of getting their feet wet and, and kind of learning about it as as they're bringing themselves in. Um you know we all love games where we all love the stories that they tell, we all love the experiences that they um you know they they give us and and that we have with others but for for the longest time there's al- almost been this kind of acceptance that you know for want of a better word you know if you enjoy games and you enjoy gaming and you enjoy anything around it you know you just need to have thick skin because you, you know any kind of empathy or or mental weakness is immediately latched upon and and, and it can be somewhat you know it can be very hard to find a position uh, where you're able to talk about these kind of things and and where you can feel comfortable reaching out and kind of saying, you know what, I'm I'm not feeling everything is not okie dokie right now, and 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 I, I really kind of feel like there should be something and someone that I can talk to about this, and it's very much become a it's very much become a weird expectation that that's just not something that that you can expect in the gaming industry, and whether that be from the the actual development and those who work within it, or even just from you sat down with your friends and and feeling a little bit a little bit naff on a Saturday night while you're having your having your weekly league sessions like you know it's not exactly the environment that you're able to jump on with that um so what on on top of this particular so the the, the safer together initiative obviously is what we're we're going to be talking about in a moment but there's been an awful lot put in through um you know um, talking to notable content creators, making ambassadors from other studios and and people of that ilk, um, even within the the I believe it's the Level Up campaign, the, the Level Up Mental Health campaign that was started last year, um, which was kind of aiming to get folks within the industry to kind of really step up and and provide that support for their workers to 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 go hey you know what this industry doesn't quite work like the others and we can't treat the way that this all behaves like a standard nine to five and we need to make sure that our, our staff have what they need to be supported both as people and and as employees um what what kind of yeah. you know how how in, and this is a bit of a vague question. I'm, I'm kind of throwing out as a, a softball here, I guess. But how, how do you even begin to think around tackling these kind of things? You know, like like from from the, the bottom, because obviously you must look at identifying an issue, looking at it, and going, "What can we do to support?" You know, there must be an awful lot of discussion and thought that actually goes into pulling these together um, when you're you're deciding on how you're going to pursue these. Um, yeah, I'll take take this one um just going back to what you said in the beginning i think that's the very reason safe in our world came came about in the first place was you know the, the there's some guys from the industry a couple of years ago now chatting about mental health chatting about you know how that's so prevalent in the gaming world both with gamers you know a lot of gamers find that that gaming is is a great solace for them it's a great place to go and be themselves and hmm. And you know maybe sort of hide away from some some other issues that they might be facing, um, and I think you know that these guys are now our trustees. They sort of started thinking, well, what can we do? Should we raise some money to raise you know you know raise some money for a mental health charity? And as they started talking, they're like, we need to do something ourselves. We need to pull together, you know, um, a, a group of people that can actually look out for for everyone in the gaming industry. Yeah, the gamers, most importantly, you know, because everybody who works in the industry pretty much is a gamer anyway. So, you know, we needed to to pull this charity together to make sure that everyone knows there is <clears throat> somewhere to go and somewhere safe. So the level up that you mentioned, yeah, that's our flagship program for the industry. That's where we're asking every company out there, developers, publishers, 
everybody to come together and say, let's start the conversation. Let's make sure our staff, our talent, our employers, our, sorry, employees know that there is someone looking after, after them. There's somewhere to go. Um, and so as far as that's concerned, we want to offer help. We want to offer resources. We want to offer training. Um, and we want to be you know, we want to be the hub for that. Come to us and we will help you. We've got a toolkit to help you. We're here to give you resources um, to get you on that journey. Because I think a lot of a lot of maybe smaller studios might think, you know, I don't think there's not enough of us to do that. But there always is. And it's just coming together, getting a pledge together um, and, you know, just just making sure we're having that conversation. You know, if people come in. Uh, from you know uh, from home and they've they've hurt their leg or they've got a bad back or a headache they tell people yeah. if they're suffering with mental health issues they don't they just sit quietly um, and that can lead to time off and and all sorts of issues so we're really really um, pushing our level up mental health campaign to everybody in the industry um, but going on with with um, uh, gamers themselves um, that's why one of the reasons we decided to set up our Safer Together Discord, um, which is which is fairly new. Um, Rosie probably uh, has more insight into you know some of the reasons why we really brought that really brought that to the fore. Yeah, I mean it was a joint effort with me and Jake. Really, uh, we spent a lot of time working on the server to basically be able to create a safe space and community for people to go to because often. More often than not, it's very easy to say, like, I'll talk to someone, but if you don't have those environments that you feel safe enough to discuss things with, whether it's your friends or your colleagues or your family, we wanted to have some somewhere else that you could you could go if you didn't feel like you had anywhere else to go. Um, and that's kind of where the idea started, um, to be able to offer a haven for people to go, even if it's not to talk about mental health at all, even if hmm. it's just to go and say, I... You know, I want to go and play Among Us. Who's going to come join with me? I don't want to play mm. alone. Um, but yeah, and, and Jake put a lot of work into that as well to make sure that we've got a variety of different channels within the Discord to, to make everyone feel like they've got somewhere to talk to. Somewhere, someone to talk to. <laughs> Well, I guess that makes a, a huge, a huge difference. Like you say, even just knowing that everybody involved in this location is going to be on on the same wavelength. You, you know what I mean? Like, like even just knowing that you're among that that kind of like minded set of people, it, it can almost be liberating in a weird way, right? Where you, you're kind of like, I, I know, I that you know what? Maybe I don't feel right now. Like I need to to air my my grievances or, or or to just open open up my, my my can of worms but but if i was to i know that right here it would probably it would probably be you know somewhere that i could um yeah i think even knowing that you're in a community with everyone who's got one thing in common is a, is a comfort yeah even if you don't actually act on it I th yeah i think um you know like uh going back to to gamers i i kind of come at it from a, a gamer's perspective and and you learn with before safe in our world and, and after that a lot of uh gamers use games as an escape and from the days of uh 80s retro you know uh side scrolling to now where we can create te we can create games that tell a story um i think safe in our world just kind of put uh it brings it all to the front stage rather than um rather than having gamers and games industry people uh feel so hidden in the back and not cared about and uh safe in our world barges through the door like Kool-Aid man and goes, you know, we care. <laughs> we want we want to you know, we want to provide a place, we want to represent you and we will not you know uh, we will not stop until you know mental health is treated just like a broken leg you know or just like a you know an illness a common illness so and i guess that's that's the hardest part um uh, i think that kind of echoes both jake and and sarah here is at, at a certain point it, it it's almost like a a, a well-known not really attempted to, to hide secret right like, like everyone is kind of looking and looking at it going hey 
someone should really be doing something about this. Somebody, you know, somebody should really be making the time and the effort to to, to kind of put this together because there are issues and they do need addressing and, and there isn't these kind of resources and there isn't that kind of support available. And to a certain point, it's, it's like that bystander syndrome of like, ah, oh, well, someone else will do it eventually at some point. Somebody, somebody with either the resources or the energy or the, or the, or the know-how will will kind of make it happen. And I hope that day comes soon. Whereas, you know, the Safe in Our World team and and all of you wonderful folks involved with the ones that were like, actually, you know what? No, let's not just sit and talk about it. Let's be the ones that start that conversation. Let's be the ones that are kind of grabbing a hold of everyone in the industry and going hey like like we're doing cool stuff you want to you want to do it with us because you know it's it's going to happen and it needs to happen so you can come and you can come and do it with us now or or you can wait and see everyone else doing it and go okay you know what we should probably get involved in this um which yeah i mean absolutely i'm not wearing a hat right now but but hats off to to all of you for that because you know it's very easy to look at something that's being done and go we want to do that um but better or we want to be involved in that but it's it's an absolutely massive difference to being the ones going we're gonna just do this now like, like we're going to get this off the ground and, and we're going to we're gonna figure it out we're gonna figure it out we're gonna we're gonna find out how to do it and we're gonna make it happen like it's a that, that, yeah. that's, that's a heck of an yeah. undertaking i think yeah. it's as much that oh sorry no go you go <laughs> i think it's as much that but also it's what we're trying to do is empower other people to be able to embrace these discussions as well and it doesn't mm. have to be from safe in our world like it can be a stepping stone to say like you know it's not just us talking about it and it is important and it's not no one's going to get it perfect the first time around or the second mm. time around but it's about talking about it and opening that discussion more than living in fear of ever saying anything mm. uh, and that's through both the level up program with empowering companies to be able to implement mental health um programs but also with um people who run communities and streamers and content creators who um, might not know how to embrace that subject and even just talking about it and then people in the chat might be saying like oh my god yes I get that <laughs> it's just a yeah. bit of relief isn't it yeah I mean that's that's definitely something that we're really conscious of is we want to empower everybody to be able to have that conversation and you know I think Rosie just touched on like community managers content creators you know streamers that you know they can find themselves in situations that are quite difficult to handle it could become quite toxic or mm -hmm. they, they could come across people reaching out to them and not knowing how the best way to deal with that so mm -hmm. you know we want to do as much as we can um, to provide training and resources and help to those people um, so that they know how to, to um, you know, deal with these situations, point people in the right direction, but also to look after them, you know, being mm. on that front line as a community manager, um, you know, you are the link uh, b between between the public and your brand or whatever. Mm. And you need, you know, you need to look after yourself as well because they can be some quite tough jobs out there. So, we want we want to look after everybody you know it, it sounds a lot like we want to care for everybody but we really do but also we like to to think you know we can have a two way conversation if people are suffering and there's something that we can do to help them some kind of 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 resource um or or you know i don't know some kind of mass training or or whatever mm. it is you know we we we've got a lot of topics that we want to cover um and we're flexible and you know we want to be out there you know, helping everybody start that conversation and, and find find some help or, or just find someone to talk to. And I think bang on. Um, that, that's a really very good point. I mean, I mean the the community manager side of things obviously speaks volumes to to, my, to myself uh, as as that particular role. I mean, quite thankfully, ninety nine point nine percent of the wonderful people that interact with us across all of our brands and and games and and socials, they're, they're all darlings. Well, honestly, I, I I haven't personally um experienced anything that that's managed to to reduce me to a um you know ben and jerry's shower cry yet and that's not an invitation <laughs> by the way it's not an invitation by the way but th there is an awful lot when you are a public facing um persona be it in a professional capacity or or even you know you mentioned streamers and content creators there that there's not really teaching for for those things you, you know a lot of people find themselves in these very public positions um 
in front of very passionate and and sometimes that passion is incredibly misguided or, or not entirely handled all that well audiences without really being given the, the, the mental support or prep to how to be that. Uh, and that can come in so many ways, um, be it just, you know, a, a people being, um, for want of a better word, you know, sacrifice for something that they've done or something that they've said where they weren't quite expecting that this this was going to be a reaction to, to others, where, you know, maybe all of a sudden you decide... People, someone decides that you're a lightning rod for something in particular, and all of a sudden you're you're kind of up on this pedestal, going, "I was just making videos about video games. I, I don't quite know why there's a lot of people that have all of a sudden decided that I, I'm allowed to be miserable now. Like it, it can be quite a harrowing experience in in many different ways when you're in these kind of public public locations. Um, none of which, I mean, I, I know um, Jake yourself, you've you've done. On and off streaming, Tegan. You know, we obviously do the the wide live streaming here, but we we both you know have our own individual content creations um, outside of work. Um, at no point did I ever really, you know, personally, I I never aimed to be a streamer, not not less of any successful one. You know, you, you sit down, you play video games for, with your mates, and then all of a sudden, you know, 10 people, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, they all start showing up, and all of a sudden you're like, well, this is happening now, I guess I run with it. And that's as much preparation as you get. You know, no one really goes out there going, I'm going to become really, really, really good, and I'm totally mentally prepared to handle every piece of exposure and all of the mental capacity that I'm going to need to deal with everything that goes with it. Like, that's just not something that you can be taught or something that that goes with, right? So... I think it's a really, really useful thing um, that something on on top of, like you say, everything that you're doing within the industry, um, you know, that side of things is also being mentioned as well, because it's something that a lot of content creators don't feel comfortable talking about. You know, you'll, you'll see endless um, threads where, where you know, the, the kind of infamous format of, you'll see a streamer or a content creator putting a twit longer post up and you just immediately know that there's going to be something god awful within that right like you know it's going to be a here's a story of something that i've been holding on to because i haven't had an avenue to vent it yet or here's something awful that's been happening that i've not been able to deal with and i'm at my wits end and i don't know how to support that like the ideal world is when those things aren't a thing right like the ideal world is when people are able to process that kind of stuff as and when it's occurring on, and they're able to kind of process that. So yeah. Yeah. Like, well, we're, massive, we're hopefully massive we're going to have, we're going to have their backs. <laughs> we're going to get, we've got training lined up and, you know, somewhere to go and hopefully at the end of it, build a community for those kind of content creators and community managers where they can chat to each other and talk about their experiences and how they've dealt with them and the best ways they think dealing with those issues are going forward. Um, and that's a really important part of what we're what we're doing this year with the funding that we've received so far um, is, is to look after those guys. And, you know, as we all know, we love our streamers. We love watching people, but they need looking after, too. And uh, that's that's high on the priority for safe. Especially with like the nature of going viral at the minute is someone yeah. can go from not many people really looking at their content to suddenly thousands of eyes. Yeah. And I can't even imagine how daunting that must be, uh, especially if they don't have a support system in place already. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's it's super important and it's very much on our agenda as well. Awesome. All right. Um, and just for those of you watching in the stream right now, obviously this has been pre-recorded because but we're all very busy people, so we don't often get a chance to sit together like this and we couldn't get this done um, during the hours of our live stream. Um, but uh, all of the information for Safe in Our World socials and the Discord that has been mentioned will be getting posted in the chat by me over the course of this little video interview. Um, so be sure to click on those. And if you're watching on YouTube, um, then it will be in the description. So keep an eye out for those and get yourself involved. Go go meet these wonderful folks and the people that they support and kind of, you know, get involved. Okay, uh, Tegan, hit them. Oh. So obviously throughout the month of May, it is Mental Health Month and you guys are running the Safer Together fundraiser. So I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit more about what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. So um, the concept of the fundraiser basically stems from the Discord, which is also called Safer Together. 
Um, and we wanted to kind of highlight the power that communities, the positive communities and co-op games can have um, with people with on your mental health, um, especially during, you know, this year where no one's really been able to leave their house or see their friends a lot. And like even myself personally, I've made so many friends over gaming in the past year. Um, it's <laughs> ridiculous. And um, it kind of stemmed from there. Yeah. So we we wanted to be able to use that medium to um, kind of push people to consider talking about their mental health, whether it was within those communities or whether it's outside of those as well. And um, just basically to, to open the discussion for the first time if they haven't already or to initiate the discussion with someone who they think might need some help. Um, and that's kind of the basis of the fundraiser. Uh, and so throughout May, we are um, encouraging companies to all take part in the discussion as well. Individuals, streamers, our ambassadors, our patrons, everyone's getting involved and uh, we're so thankful for it. Um, but as the Safe and Our World activity uh, starts, so it starts tomorrow, which isn't technically May, <laughs> but um, we're doing a panel with Yuki on imposter syndrome with a great lineup of people and um, that should kick off the, the fundraiser really. And then for the first week of May, we're going to be doing community streams every day, um, seven to nine BST uh, with, our, with our community and with our partners as well. One of which... Wired Productions will be hosting. <laughs> yep, and we are nice very, very excited to be doing so. Uh, you're going to be able to see uh, on Tuesday the 4th. Dates, yes. date, date, dates are all merging into <laughs> one at this time. Time yes, means nothing. Right. Time means nothing anymore. Um, <laughs> Tuesday the 4th from 7 p.m. onwards, um, you will be able to see 7 p.m. BST. Um, you'll be able to see ourselves with wonderful Jake. Uh, alongside and the wide crew slash safe in our world community all exploring the wonderful galaxy the wonderful known universe in a little bit of no man's sky exploration and we've got a couple of couple of cool ideas for what we want to do in there which we're not going to quite let slip yet but um make sure and i believe that will be taking place of our usual thursday stream so Make a note of that. Tuesday, not Thursday next week, okay? Tuesday, not Thursday. Be there and come explore space with us and do awesome things. But it isn't just us. You you like you say, you've got the um the Yuki stuff. Um and then a series of streams starting on is it Friday or Saturday they start? Uh Saturday. Saturday they start. Okay, give us a quick rundown and if if I remember, which I will do, because I'm very good, um, I will be pulling up the display of the schedule right now so people can have a look at it and make a mental note as you talk us through it. So give us a rundown of the schedule, Rosie. Right, I better get this right then if it's on the screen. <laughs> um, so um, Saturday, we're kicking things off with Fall Guys, uh, with Hannah, Hannah Rutherford, um, who is kindly hosting for us. Uh, Sunday will be Mario Kart with the lovely people at Game Byte over on their Facebook page. Um, but for these two streams, we're also uh, going to be having shoutcasting on our Safe and Our World Twitch channel, which is not on a schedule, but it will be soon. <laughs> uh, so there'll be two different places to watch. Uh, from Monday, it will be Animal Crossing again with the Game Byte people. Uh, Tuesday the 4th will be No Man's Sky. Uh, Wednesday the 5th is Human Fall Flat with Curve Digital. Thursday the sixth. <laughs> You're doing great. Minecraft. I'm doing great. <laughs> and Friday the seventh, on the last day uh, of our community streams week, will be uh, an All Star Among Us stream with Hannah again, but with two different lobbies full of Safe and Our World affiliated people. And I'm sure it'll be absolutely chaotic, but in the best way. <laughs> I was about to say that that sounds like the, uh, the the wholesome chaos energy that that you kind of need for for this kind of event. That that, that tiny little bit of edge that makes everything just a little bit funnier. <laughs> cannot wait and once again all of the links uh, for these locations and streams will be in the description please make sure to go and make a note of them drop those follows get those notifications enabled so that each time every one of these streams goes live across all platforms you can go in there and immediately even if you don't you know um, do donating because there's, there's so many other ways to support rather than just donating i mean donations me make an awful lot like let's not Let's not beat around the bush. Like, like you know, the, at the end of the day, everything that's safe in our world are trying to do, um, you know, 
it, it's got to come from somewhere, right? Like, like all of the, all of the initiatives that you've managed to run so far, all of the incredible things that you've done, all of the changes and the foundations that you've laid to make these changes have all come from fundraising through through charity giveaways, um, you know, some of which wide have supported, some of which uh, have just been industry wide pushes, um, you know. At the end of the day, it, it costs money to do this stuff. It costs money. It takes time. It takes effort. And, you know, donating does help massively. So if you are able, donations are going to be going to Safe in Our World on their Tiltify, which, again, will be linked across the entirety of May. Even after this week of streams is done and dusted, you will still be able to donate. You will still be able to contribute. And we will still be supporting and pushing out uh, all, all of the amazing social calls to, to kind of go, hey, Come do a cool thing, make make a difference for somebody. Um, but donating isn't the only way. There's so many ways that you can show support. You can be active in those streams. You can show up. You can take part in them. You can share them. You, you know whether you see them from the social accounts of Wired or through Safe in Our World or even the individual people that you see on the screen before you. Share them far and wide. Point them in the directions of people. Go hang out there with some friends. Go watch the streams and clip out cool moments and share them out across the internet. Go and look at this fun thing that's happening. Look at this awesome thing that's occurring. And they're all fundraising for an incredible cause. Go go do that. Like Any kind of support of that nature will always, always be worth its weight in gold, even if you can't just throw down the cold hard cash yourself. There's so many ways to support. Um, so I guess um, that, that kind of covers it. We did have a structure. Would you believe it or not? We did have a structure as to which order we were answering the questions and the best laid plans of, of Gary and Tegan uh, are, have oft gone awry once more and kind of got ran in and, and muddled in together. So Tegan, do you want, do you want to, to, to pitch up last one? Yeah. Yeah. Our final question was just, did you have any incentives and what are they for the fundraiser? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we have some fun incentives. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've got a few special edition things, actually, that money can't buy anywhere else. Um, we've got um, a special edition pin badge. Um, we've got some really cool safe in our world, um, like reusable mugs. Um, and we've got some really, really cool, like face mask bandanas, um, which look cool anyway, but you can also pull them up and use them as a uh, as a mask there'll be other spot prizes um we've got some really also other cool stuff haven't we rosie do recently i'm not sure where exactly it will be yet but uh there will be a, a giveaway of an xbox series s at some point throughout the month plus mm -hmm. a lot of other cool codes uh, and exciting merch to be to be announced <laughs> So lots of things that they can't quite talk about yet, but there's going to be an ample amount of great incentives and giveaways and prizes. And, you know, outside of just outside of just the cool content itself, I mean, everyone that you named on that list, you know, you know the Game Bike group are awesome. Curve, uh, other friendly indie pubs of ours are, are lovely people. You know, Hannah is an absolute diamond. She's she, she, an absolute, absolute superstar. Um, so, you know, just on top of the good the good content, as the kids say, um, that there's plenty of incentives along the way. Um, and I guess what, what we should wrap on is the, the notification that, you know, as of, you know, this weekend starting this, this community stream, smorgasbord of streams. I just wanted another reason to use that word. I love that word. A smorgasbord of streams being Indeed. pushed out, being pushed out over the next week. Uh, Wired will also be doing a long, long stream. Name is kind of still in flux at the moment because me and Tegan are trying to think of something really witty. You'll know when we think of it because you'll see it in our social posts. But a, a long old stream on Thursday, the 13th of May, um, during which there are it's, it's going to be an, an, a quite literally an all-day event. We're, we're looking at starting about midday and running for as long as humanly possible. Um, we're going to be fundraising up towards that with stretch goals for different things to occur during the stream. Uh, we're not going to share those with you just yet because we just need to nail the last one or two. But there are some absolutely incredible things. We're talking giveaways. We're talking community segments during the stream. We're talking forfeits. We're talking very cool content that we will make after the stream because unfortunately, pandemic, there's some things that we can't do face-to-face -face, um, right now because we're not in the office, but some incredible things that we will be doing after the fact. 
Um, that will be running pretty much for the entirety of that day, and we will be supporting that, obviously, with uh, fundraising pushes on the streams leading up to that. So every every penny you donate to that leading up to the stream will get more content for that stream. And then during the stream, every penny you donate will unlock either me and Tegan having to do something awful, not too awful, but just a little bit awful, or just some <laughs> exciting, awesome content that you've been asking and you know poking at for a little bit of time. Keep an eye on our socials, and we'll have full-on details about that for you very, very shortly. But um, I guess that just about does us. Um, we're, we're, we're approaching that half an hour mark. Um, thank you all very much for, for jumping on. Jake, it was a pleasure. Can we get a rundown of your animals before we leave? Oh, yeah. I've uh, got two cockatiels behind me, a tortoise uh, there over there, and uh, some da two dagoos there. They're little demons. And the rat's asleep. There's an owl outside. <laughs> There's two dogs downstairs. Um, that's it, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, you literally live in a veritable Noah's Ark. That that is yeah, that is so that cool. is quite impressive. That is quite impressive. But it's, lots of people had too many animals that need rescuing and, and mm. we kind of just took them all on and and uh it's it's become a tiny zoo. <laughs> That's pretty cool though. I'm, I'm all in favor of that. That's, it's a sizable zoo. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. like I've definitely paid money to go to zoos that have had way less variety on offer than that. <laughs> I'm just I, saying. I could charge. I could call you should, it you the, should. The games zoo. <laughs> Make, yeah. make it make it part of the fundraising. Like, like you get yeah. a ticket to, to, to just turn up at Jake's, <laughs> just turn up Jake's house and go look at the animals. A thousand pounds and the owl gets to sit on my shoulder or something during a stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, is, is the owl that well trained? Yeah. Is Molly wow. that well trained? Wow. Yeah, if I just put her on my shoulder, she'd just stay there as long as nothing freaked her out or anything. Yeah. I have, to, I might have to ask you for, for video proof of that, Jake. Not that I'm doubting you. Not that I'm doubting yeah. you, but but owls have never been friendly to me in the past, but that's a story for another time. Rosie, Sarah, Jake, thank you so much for joining us. Um, good luck with everything related to Safer Together. Um, we will be championing and making as much noise as possible to you every step of the way. And once again, um, the Yuki thing... We say tomorrow, it will actually be today when people are seeing this. Yuki will be today as we're talking about it. And if you're watching this after Thursday, it's in the past. You missed it. You missed it. What were you doing? We hope you watched it. Um, but what time today will Yuki be, Rosie? Be from 4 o'clock, BST. Uh, however, we are going to be recording it. So if you miss it, we'll be able to catch it another time. Wonderful. I might have to get the, um, the URL from that for you and stick that in the comments below for people to go over and watch in retrospect. Okay, um, all of you, let's, let's do a quick sign-off. I'm going to put you on the spot. G give, me, give me something really cool that you're looking forward to in the Save Together campaign. Five seconds and say goodbye, each of you, starting with Tegan. Go. Oh, I didn't know I was included in this. Yep, um, yep. Nobody escapes. <laughs> Nobody escapes. Okay. I am very much looking forward to the stream we are going to be putting on during the campaign because I'm excited to see for everyone else to see all the forfeits and silly things we're going to get up to on the stream that we haven't announced yet. Good answer. Good answer. Rosie, go. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the absolute carnage on Among Us. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> totally valid. Jake, go. I can't wait for the community spirit to see everybody come together for such a wonderful cause and, oh, and we love that. positivity that shines out. You know, you can't beat that. You cannot beat that. So, love that. Love that. <laughs> 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 I agree. Okay. Well, Sarah sat there going, I've got to follow that. <laughs> I've, got yeah, to, I've got to follow that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just excited about the whole thing. I'm. I'm to I'm totally buzzing for the whole week, and I'm also excited because I've had a bit of a hand in some of the uh, the bespoke um, incentives that uh, got mm. safe in our world. Um, it's just brand brand new merch that um, the people that fundraise so kindly for us are going to get a hold of, and I think they're going to love it. So I'm looking forward to seeing people wearing our bandanas and drinking out of our mugs and having just had a, a you know a fantastic time fundraising for us and thank you to you guys for inviting us on today it's been yeah. absolutely brilliant to sit and chat about what we do 
Um, and thank you to everybody who's going to fundraise for us. Indeed. Once again, it's absolute pleasure to have you with us, folks. Please, please, please. Um, you know, usually if if we're you know if we're trying to tell you to do something like go buy our games or go wishlist our games, you'll just get me and Tegan sat here during a stream going, "Hey, go do it!" Right? Like, like that's what you get. We are so passionately behind what Safe and Our World are doing, like, like their, their entire cause, their entire, entire mission. It doesn't just, you know, it's not just an amazing cause in itself, but it has massive, massive implications for everything that we do. You, you know, like it's why you will see Safe in, in Our World on our games. You, you know, it's why you'll see us championing things like this. It is something that we are 100% behind. And every single thing that you can do, it, it, whether it be the smallest of donations, whether it be an amplification of some social things, whether it be coming and joining the streams, it doesn't matter. Thank you all so much in advance for getting involved. Please make sure, jump in the links that are here during the live Twitch show right now. Jump in the description below in the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Go join the Discord. Go follow their socials. Keep an eye out over the next week. Keep an eye out over the next month while the entire initiative drive is going on. And just try and hype it up and support it as much as possible. Because, hey, much like Safe in Our World did, okay? You've got to start it from somewhere. And you might think that you and your mates hanging out and watching the stream doesn't make a huge difference. You might think that your social share doesn't make a difference. You might think that your five quid, five dollar donation doesn't make a difference. It does. It does. It 100% does. And it allows us to be able to put a spotlight on the incredible things that these people are doing. Rosie, Jake. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Tegan, I think, even though we're technically not live now, because we're playing this at the end of, the, of our live stream, let's just pretend that we're live right now and say, wow, that was a really long show, Tegan. We, we did such a long stream. Oh, boy, am I'm I tired. Exhausted. I am exhausted. <laughs> we are all going to do a very nice, awkward Brady Bunch wave in our squares at the camera and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. If you can't go. wait. That's it. Come on. There we go. That's it. We love it. Thank you all for joining us, everyone. Please make lots of noise for safe in our world. And we will catch you specifically Tuesday the 4th for some No Man's Sky with Jake and the rest of the community. And you will catch us doing a big safe in our world stream on Thursday the 13th. You aren't quite ready for what's going to be in there. Uh, we are not quite ready for what's going to be in there. But keep your eyes peeled for all of the Safe Together initiative. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.